Hey there, this is Adam again, and let's talk about web development. Because whether you're doing front-end application or some RESTful API, you need a service to host that. And today we're going to learn about Azure App Service, a service that streamlines the process of development in Azure. So let's find out how we can use it, shall we? Let's start with introduction into App Service. If you ever have been hosting web application before, you already probably been using some sort of hosting environment. This is a hosting environment in Azure, allows you to host web application, mobile backends, maybe some RESTful APIs. It has also a lot of features like auto scaling, high availability, and it allows for hosting of Windows and Linux applications. How does it work? Normally you have users which hit app service and just get a response. That's the high level basic overview, but it is how it works. It's just a web application. When you register a new app service, you get a name registered in Azure websites domain. So if you called your app service demo one, you're gonna get demo one Azure websites.net DNS name. What's underneath this is some sort of folder structure that imitates a container structure that you would normally see on your hosting environment in which your application resides. This can be, of course, a single page application, or it can be some sort of compiled application. This, of course, is embedded within something called App Service Plan. App Service Plan is a capacity. It's a container which has assigned capacity like vCore, RAM or storage. What's great about this separation is that you can host multiple services within one App Service Plan, allowing you to utilize the resources in the best way possible. Great thing about App Service is that it supports multiple languages like C Sharp, PHP, Java, JavaScript, Python, Ruby, or Docker. Docker is not a language, but if you're using containers, this is the technology you can use in order to move your containers to the cloud. Additionally, Application Service allows you to use your existing um, repositories in order to deliver continuous integration and deployment. It supports most of the popular ones like GitHub, Azure DevOps, Bitbucket, Local Git, External Git, Docker Hub, and a lot of different ones. What's also great about App Service is its high availability. So Microsoft guarantees 99.95 availability for App Service. With global scale, you can also scale up, which in this case means that if you have a B1 server with one core 1.75 gigs of RAM, you can scale it up, basically meaning beef up your server, add some cores, increase some RAM, but also you can scale out from one server to multiple servers at a time. What's great here is that you can actually mix the two. So you can scale out and scale up if you need that. Other features include some security and compliance, so some standard certifications, Authentication through identity providers like Azure ID, Google, Facebook, Twitter, and others. You have also Visual Studio integration. There are some additional APIs for mobile development like course and push notifications. And there's a lot of other features. We're going to cover some of those today, but let's move on. So let's go into a portal and create app service. So I already created a resource group for me, so I'm going to go hit create resource, type in this case, not an app service, but it's a web app. You can actually see it also here because it's just a legacy name for the service. So let's hit web app. So we need to pick up resource group. I'm going to pick up the one that I created previously. I need to give it a name. Notice this is the Azure websites.net name. So if I'm going to type demo one, it's going to get rejected because that service already exists. So I need to pick unique name. That should be fine. A for E demo app. Next, I need to pick up the runtime. So I'm going to pick up .NET Core 2.2, .2, which is the one that I will be using. I need to choose operating system. I'm going to choose in this case, Linux. And I need to pick up a region. I'm going to host something in North Europe because it's the closest data center to me. Next, we need to create app service plan. By default, you can choose if you have some existing, if you don't, it will prompt you to create new one. 
So I'm going to copy my instance name and create new instance uh, app service plan. And I need to choose SKU. I don't probably want production version here because I'm just testing. So B1 should be fine. Let's hit review and create and hit create. I will speed this up so we don't wait for the deployment, but it usually takes under one minute. Looks like we're good here. So we can go to resource now and you're going to get a lot of options. As you see, there's quite a lot of options available for you. So we, before we go to our demo on how to deploy the web application, I prepared you a list of what are the most important features that I think are part of the app service. So let's go back to presentation and let's talk about those features. First of all, there's overview tab. This blade contains most of the important features about app service. And on the top, you see the most common actions that you can perform from the app service, like stopping, restarting, getting publishing profile, deleting the service and many others. Next, you have the URL, the app service plan, and the status. So those are the most critical information about your application. And you can find them in overview tab. Next, you have also diagnose and solve problems tab. Actually, they call them blades. So maybe sh we should probably call them this way. So in this blade, you have some some diagnostics that you can perform on your application. So if your application is not running, you can hit here for availability and performance and it will run some out of the box tests that will allow you to diagnose your applications. You have also security blade. In this blade, you have recommendations from security center service from Microsoft that scans your application setup for vulnerabilities and will alert, alert you if you have some. In the deployment blade, you have something called quick start. Quick start is just a reference to documentation for the most popular languages on how to start with app service. There are also deployment slots. Deployment slots are way for you to do deployment to production without the downtime. So basically this is a copy of your app service that you can deploy to test application. And if it works, just hit swap and it's ready to go. Additionally, you have deployment center. We've been talking about that a bit. This is the automatic continuous deployment and delivery. You pick here a source, you choose what is the compilation method. And whenever you make a comment to your repository, it will automatically send the update here to app service and your application will be built from scratch. So next up is settings. In this tab, you have a lot of information, but the most important ones are configuration in which you have several tabs like application settings. This tab consists of application settings and connection strings for your application. You also have general tab in which you pick a stack that you develop on. You pick a platform, either 32 or 64 bit and some additional options. There are also default documents. If you're hosting static application, this might be helpful for you. And then path mappings, if you need to change some default behaviors about the application. What is good about the application settings tab is that whatever you put in application settings will be mirrored as an environment variable. For instance, this application settings instrumentation key is also visible under app setting underscore application settings instrumentation key environment variable. This is a great feature because if you're developing in .NET Core, you also have this app setting development JSON file in which you can put development uh, credentials and settings without needing to deploy them and uh, without the need to comment them to the source code repository, which is actually very bad practice if you do so. So this of course will be mirrored. And if you're using some SDKs like .NET SDK, it will automatically pick up for development from the development file. And when you move it to, to the app service, it will pick up from, um, it will pick up the setting from the environment setting. Next, we have authentication and authorization tab. In this tab, you can configure 
out of the box integration of external providers like Azure Active Directory, Microsoft, Facebook, Google, Twitter. This is a great security feature. Without coding a single line, you can protect your application using identity. Next, you have um, custom domains. So you can either attach existing domain that you already have, uh, buy new domain from the Azure itself. Next is networking tab. In here, you have some VNet integration features, hybrid connectivity and CDN. So you can extend fe uh, functionality of your application through on-premise connectivity, behind firewall connectivity, or maybe just add some firewall based on IP that you can secure your application quickly. Next, you have scale up. Scale up is something we already been talking about. So this is the changing of the how big your server is. When you are creating server and you don't like your size, you can change it here. You can also go to scale out. In scale out blade, you are able to select either manual scale. So choose the instance count inst amount of the servers manually, or you can create custom auto scale. In this tab, you will be able to define what is the metric that you want to automatically scale the number of instances based on. This can be either network traffic or CPU or some other metrics. Next, you have Properties tab. This is a bit more advanced than the Overview tab because it has additional features and additional information about the application itself, like outbound OEPs. Because remember, this is cloud and your application IP will change every now and then, especially when you restart it. This information is critical if you want to secure it through some firewalls on based on IPs. Next is App Service Plan tab in which you have some blades. Uh, first blade is App Service Plan. This is just a shortcut which moves you to the blade for managing App Service Plan. A lot of features here are pretty much the same uh, like for App Service because a lot of App Service portal features are basically shortcuts for those to manage App Service Plan. You have also quotas. Quotas are very bad, I would say, because they don't show much besides the file storage and the quota that you took. And lastly, you have a good feature that allows you to move from one app service plan to another. And lastly, there's a development tools tab. In this, you have several blades, but I just want to show you one, which is advanced tools. Advanced tools is the, another portal which allows you to manage and debug and basically go into the server that is hosting your application and see what's underneath. So if you have some info, you can go there into environment tab, see what are the system informations. You can go to debug console in which you can explore what is the file structure of your system and also use partial or bash. In case of Linux applications, you will see here SSH with bash. We can actually go and start deploying some simple web applications. So let's go to Visual Studio Code. I already prepared myself a demo folder. It's currently empty. So I will be using that .NET 2.2 to deploy my application. Let's create a new application. You do that in a terminal by typing .NET new. And you need to specify the name of the template that you will be using. We're gonna use MVC template. This initializes the folder with the most basic template for MVC application. It has just a couple of views that are out of the box for you to test. When creating new application, the .NET restore is automatically hit. That means we have all the packages needed. So we just need to hit .NET run to test application. Hitting .NET run also means we're building the application, which is very important to remember because if you're just making small change and you don't want to run application, you need to type .NET build. Our application seems to be running under localhost 5000. So let's open this URL. It look like, looks like it's okay. It's localhost 5001 and seems to be working just fine. So let's go back to Visual Studio Code and deploy this to Azure. 
So in order to deploy this to Azure, you need to go to extensions and install Azure account and Azure App Service extensions. When you have those extensions, you will have this Azure tab here in which you are able to log in and explore your app services. So I'm going to open my subscription. See, this is my application. I'm going to right click on it, hit deploy to web app. During the first deployment, I need to select browse. Where is my folder where my application is compiled? So I'm going to hit browse, bin debug.net core app 2.2. It will prompt me if I'm sure that I want to override my existing deployment. I am sure. And it's currently deploying to, to Azure. If you want to see what is happening, go to Output tab. So it seems like it's copying files right now, running some pod deployment commands, and restarting application service. So this is important to remember that every time you deploy application, there will be a restart of the application itself. So let's hit browse up website. See, we are on A for E demo app, Azure websites.net. That means we're successfully deployed to, to Azure without any worries. This is really easy. And if you would want to introduce a change right now, it's as simple as going to one of the views, changing some text, for instance, Azure, welcome Azure for everyone. Hit save, go to terminal, close the running application, type .NET build. Once it's built, you can go here and redeploy the application. Let's go to Output tab to see what's happening. So it seems like deployment was successful, restarting of the application. And let's go back to application, refresh the page, and we see Welcome Azure for Everyone. That was easy. So going back to our presentation, Let's talk about when would you choose Azure App Service because there are a lot of options in Azure for the compute and hosting of the web applications. And what would be the good choice for the App Service? This diagram might be big at start, but it's very simple. So let's go through the scenarios. So if you're building new application, you don't require new full control. This is also not high performance computing scenario. And this is also not a microservice scenario. That means it's a perfect case for the app service. Similarly, if you're migrating, but you want to optimize your existing application for the cloud, and you don't need high performance computing, and you don't need microservices, then go again for the app service. Additionally, if you're migrating, but no longer optimizing, this is just lift and shift scenario, you, and this application is not containerized and it cannot be containerized, and this is a web or app API application and the language that it's written in, it's supported by app service, then go for app service. Of course, if the language would not be supported, that would be the scenario to go to virtual machine. And lastly, if you're migrating and again, lift and shift, but the application can be containerized, then, well, that's straightforward, then containerize it. The choice is a bit more tricky because Microsoft says is this, if this is a cloud app for web and mobile, go for app service. But the choice is not as simple here because Kubernetes or container instances, service fabric, those are also great options. So while the choice here might be very obvious, if you want simple container service, go for app service, you should always explore another options and see if any other service will deliver you what you need. And that's it for Azure App Service. So the question now is, is this the right service for me? If it is, just grab the keyboard, start typing some code. In just 10 minutes time, you will be on Azure hosting your web application. So that's it for today. If you like the video, hit thumbs up, maybe leave a comment. And if you want to see more, subscribe. And I guess, see you next time.